In recent parts we have seen how the law of Christ helps us to keep the moral law better than the law of Moses. But if we place the new and old laws side by side, we can see that perhaps the most significant difference between them is the freedom we now have in neutral issues. Whereas the old Law of Moses had many strict rules on neutral things like food, clothes, drink and ceremonies, the Law of Christ actually says nothing specific about neutral things at all. All those laws have been stripped away. Have faith, then love God and others is a very open-ended command on that front. How do you love God and others with neutral things? Things like wood, grass, cotton, metal, stone, vegetables, plants, earth, trains, musical instruments, shoes, hats, dinners, computers, footballs, plastic chairs, wooden chairs, barbecues, television sets, windows, airplanes, money, stuffed animals, toothpaste and light bulbs. How do you fulfill the law of Christ by loving God and others with these? Well, that's up to you. You are free now to offer love authentically, spontaneously and extravagantly in any way you choose. What I mean is, God doesn't so much care what you do with those things as long as you're motivated by love of Christ and others and therefore fulfilling the law of Christ. Or as Paul puts it, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Just do what you do for the right reasons. The internal is more important than the external. Follow the voice of the Spirit, listen to your conscience, act on his prompts, give freely. Let's take money as an example. Money is a neutral thing. It's not inherently good or evil. It's just metal and paper and plastic. Under the old law of Moses, there were specific rules on such things. People were required to give 10% of their income to the temple. Now, however, that tithing law is taken away, and we're simply told to love God and others with what we have. So how we do that is now up to us. We could donate the money to charity. We could buy a homeless person some clothes or food. We could buy flowers for our girlfriend or wife. We could add it to an extra generous tip at lunch. We could sponsor someone. We could buy someone a Bible. In fact, the ways in which we can use our money to express love for God and others are almost endless. We can be as inventive as we want. And God says that it doesn't matter which way you choose, what matters is that you're doing it all for his glory. He's looking at your heart. Furthermore, if you learn to live by the Spirit, you will find God prompting you. You will learn to recognize his voice and you will learn to act in obedience to it. A relationship with God replaces the old ritual. Now this principle means that two people can do completely different things, but because they are both internally motivated by the same desire to love God and others, they are both following the law of Christ and are therefore both equally blessed. For example, one can wear jeans and another a suit. One can eat meat and another be a vegetarian. One can drink water during a church service and another doesn't. One can listen to pipe organ worship music and another guitar worship music. As long as they are all motivated by the same love of God and others and have a clear conscience about it and are reacting to the voice of the Spirit, they are all in fact following the law of Christ and God approves of all of it. The outward result of each person's love looks different, but the inner motive is all the same in each person. Again, God doesn't care so much what you do as he does your reasons for doing a thing. It's all about the motive. The motive tells God whether you are living for him or yourself. So by the same token, two people can do the exact same thing and God loves one act but hates the other. For example, one person can take money and make a show of giving it to charity for their own glory. They want everyone to see how generous they are and to praise them for it. God says he won't bless that because the person is motivated by selfish pride. Another person can give to charity so discreetly that no one even knows a donation was made. God will bless that because their motive was genuinely to love others selflessly. They want no glory for themselves. Now both have given to charity, the external act is the same, but one was following the law of Christ by their giving and the other was actually following the law of Satan. They were motivated by selfish pride. So this may be surprising, but it's possible to give to charity sinfully. Inside is more important than outside. The Bible says, People judge by outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. God's interested in what you do to an extent, but only in as much as it shows what's happening in your heart. He's interested in your inner transformation more than anything. Are you becoming Christ-like? Are you following the internal leading of the Holy Spirit? Are you putting him and others first? Or are you actually just trying to make a name for yourself? 
God doesn't primarily want new external actions. He wants new people with renovated hearts. He wants you to become more selfless and less selfish. Putting others first is Christ-like. Putting yourself first is Satan-like. John the Baptist led by example saying, He must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. It's the same for all of us. Christ-like selflessness must grow inside us through the power of the Spirit and as it spreads, it must destroy our pride and egocentrism. We must become less and less. In all you do, ask yourself, am I doing this to glorify myself or God? Jesus says that on the day of judgment, a lot of people are going to come to him saying, don't you remember the time I did this for you? Don't you remember the time I did that for you? And Jesus will say, I never knew you. This is very important for those involved in Christian ministry. Are you up on the stage because you genuinely want to serve God and others, or are you up there because you love the limelight? There's a sense in which our ministries, our worship, our preaching, and even our good acts can become sinful in the sight of God if we are motivated by selfish pride. You might think you've spent your whole life in a service, but really, if you're to be honest, it's always been about you. Be careful with that. You must be willing to make yourself nothing in the world's eyes in order to be everything in God's. Paul writes to the Corinthians on this subject saying, So be careful not to jump to conclusions before the Lord returns as to whether or not someone is faithful. When the Lord comes, he will bring our deepest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives, and then God will give everyone whatever praise is due. So God will judge based on what privately motivated us. In neutral matters, what we do is not as important as why we're doing it. Having been given freedom from the written law by Christ, we can now use that freedom in one of two ways, to serve ourselves or to serve others. Therefore, motivation is more important than action. Remember that. Let me give a few illustrations as to why we already know this is true.